Hello, kia ora, and welcome to our Climate Watch update. I'm Philip Duncan, and we're covering the month of August, but also a look at spring for September and October as well. So let's get into it. We kick off with the animated wind map for the start of August, and uh, this is showing precipitable water. In other words, where it's bright blue, that's more likely where it's going to be raining, and down here in the drier brown orange colouring, that's where it's more likely to be dry. So dry southerlies coming out of Antarctica, uh, easterly winds blowing through the tropics, and around Australia, big stormy stuff down in the Southern Ocean about to change your weather pattern for the first week of August anyway. So we've got a bit of variety going on at the moment, but the big lows that have been tracking through the Tasman are briefly stopping, but we do see them returning again as we go through this month. So let's get into it. We kick off with the La Nina watch, and that's exactly what we're in at the moment. This is from the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia, who we trust the most for our uh, climate information in this part of the world. And as you can see, here we are in August, in neutral, but only just. And when we get into October, right on the edge of being neutral or La Nina. So it could return officially uh, in the near future, but it looks as though it might start to return back to neutral again as we head into summer. We will see. I mean, this could still be a little bit wrong by a month or two, but we are looking like La Nina at least is getting close to coming back in the next couple of months. But to be honest with you, We've already got some of the weather pattern with warmer than average sea temperatures still remaining in the New Zealand area, not directly connected to La Nina, but we're seeing marine heat waves, which we'll talk about in a brief moment. But this is the model of models coming out of the Bureau of Meteorology. This is the El Nino side. This is the La Nina side. And all you have to look at is what all the models are saying. And as we go through the months ahead, a lot of them are still in that neutral zone. But also, as you can see, a lot are also dropping down into that La Nina area. So that's the reason why you're starting to hear the chatter of it returning again. Uh, this is the sea surface temperatures again from the Bureau of Meteorology. Uh, average temperatures actually returning to a number of places around the equator. But look at this, the warmer than average area down in the New Zealand area, the South Pacific Islands, not quite so extreme out in the Tasman, but still much warmer around the New Zealand area than it should be. So this is from the Moana project. This is out of New Zealand and thanks to the team at Met Ocean as well. Uh, the areas you're seeing here with the red shading, that's not a good thing. That's a sign that we're in a marine heat wave. It's good if you wanna go swimming, but it's not so good for the environment that we're seeing these temperatures well above average right across the New Zealand area. If you want some cold seawater to get into, this is the place to be, down around Otago and Canterbury. Current temperatures, this is the temperature map here, getting it down and towards 10 degrees, 11 degrees, quite different to the north here, where you're up around 15 and 16 and 17 degrees, which on some days in winter, uh, it's warmer in the water than it is out of it. So let's take a look at what is happening for the month ahead, the month of August. Where are the highs and lows going? We've seen a lot of low pressure in the Tasman Sea, but this week kicks off with high pressure in the Tasman Sea area, although it doesn't last long. Over the next few days, that moves away and the windy nor'westers start to roll on in. There's a lot of low pressure down here. Uh, for those of you who have watched the forecast for the 1st of, uh, of August, which this video will date a bit over the next couple of weeks, but for those watching it when it first came out, some really big stormy stuff down here for the first few days of August. But as we kick off the first week, it certainly does um, lead the way with high pressure. Now, as we go into the second week, you're still seeing a lot of high pressure in all the same areas, coming out of the west, crossing over Australia, low pressure down in the Southern Ocean. But we've got this blue box inside the red box. So big high pressure out over South Australia, another big high pressure zone uh, south of New Zealand, and more high pressure out to the east. Um, over around the international dateline. So that's a lot of high pressure, but in the middle here, there's enough of a gap between the three different highs to see some low pressure forming. So we're not finished yet with those Tasman Sea rainmakers. And as you saw with the sea surface temperature map, especially the eastern half of the Tasman Sea is warmer than average. So as these lows drift slowly towards New Zealand, the extra warmth, not only in the atmosphere, but also the sea, helping to create more rain. And that's exactly what we're going to be seeing again this month. We're not finished with the rain. There's more of it coming back in again. So as we go into week three, now you start to see what I'm talking about. Low pressure dominating in the middle part of this month. This is around the 15th of August when we kick off the third week. So you're seeing a lot of low pressure in the New Zealand area, but also 
out and around Australia. So the old switcheroo with the highs and the lows, they've all swapped places. Highs are now down in the Southern Ocean. Lows are further to the north. This goes with what we said last month, more variety in our weather. That means we get a bit of everything thrown at us and there's always some severe weather in winter. Someone has a flood, someone gets some snow, uh, other people miss out. But this is really encouraging a lot of variety across the country and in New Zealand and Australia, not just uh, the New Zealand area. And variety is often good for the economy because we get a bit of everything for the farmers and the growers and those working outside. So for the next few weeks ahead, there are some big highs, but there are certainly still some big lows. We are not yet done with the rainmakers. So let's get into the rain now, kicking off with the soil moisture anomaly map. In other words, are there any parts of New Zealand that are too wet or too dry? Actually, what you're seeing is a number of places a bang on perfect. It might not feel that in your mind at the moment because it's been so wet. Now there are some exceptions. The eastern side of the South Island, no surprises, wetter than it should be at the moment. But most other places, a green map, that's always a good sign. So let's take a look at the rainfall now as we move on through. This is up until the middle part of the month and a big sort of snapshot at both New Zealand, Australia and the Pacific Islands. So dry towards the top of Australia. That's a bit of a sign that we're not in La Nina at the moment. The rainmakers are down here in the Southern Ocean and brushing through the, um, the mountains and ranges along the eastern side. And then low pressure as we just saw on the maps, indicating more rain for New Zealand. And a lot of the colors you see there are showing uh, some heavier rainfall coming through. So a closer up view of New Zealand shows uh, some of these rainfall totals in the north and the purple and the blue, 100 to 150 millimetres still yet to come in. And around the outer edges of it, the reds are showing sort of 60 to 80 millimetres. So there's still plenty of rain to come through. And this is just the next 16 days. So we've still got the rest of the month to go after this. Now, the good news is the areas that have had too much rain, Southland, Otago, you're not looking too bad. 20 or 30 millimetres coming through for you. And it's a similar story maybe around sort of Northern Hawke's Bay and Gisborne. And over and uh, towards Australia, you go north of uh, Sydney, you get up towards coastal parts of Queensland and very little rainfall coming through for you. The bigger totals will be further inland. So let's have a look at the long range stuff from IBM to finish with. So this is using um, our supercomputer, IBM Watson. We're a business partner with IBM. And so this is taking a look at August rainfall, the departure from normal. What you're seeing around the North Island, the green and close to the white, means rainfall's coming back, but it looks as though it's around about normal, maybe a little bit above normal. So more rain is coming in, which means most places will have at least 100 millimeters or so coming through this month. But the South Island, the lower portion of it, leans drier than it normally does at this time of the year. And over in Australia, drier for Victoria and uh, for Tasmania, but the rain starts the further north you go. Sorry, Sydney, another a wetter than usual month coming up for you. And when we stretch this out, August, September, October, officially going into spring, uh, Victoria gets a bit of rain coming back, Tasmania gets a little bit, but the New Zealand map barely changes. We're still seeing that uh, green for most of the country and then the yellow further south. Now this is only in this borderline here, 12 plus 12 or minus 12 above average millimetres. So really you can say the whole of New Zealand's around about average coming up for the next few months ahead. That means there will be some big rainfall, but there'll also be long stretches of dry weather as well. It won't be raining all the time based on this map. Now temperature wise, here we are for the August temperatures. Again, departure from normal. How much warmer or colder will it be? And no surprises, New Zealand has not changed in months. I think it's been about a year and a half since I last saw this map looking any different to the yellow. It's not extremely warmer than average, but it's still in that half degree, which is enough to be noticed, believe it or not. And on the Australian side, to prove that the map's not broken, you can see there some parts of Australia are cooler than average, although only slightly. So. For the most part, New Zealand's definitely warmer than average. And when we spread this out over spring as well, no great deal of change in the New Zealand area. It leans about half a degree to one degree above average. That is definitely noticeable. You'll notice it more maybe with the overnight lows and perhaps a lack of frosts in the New Zealand area. We're not finished with, wet, with winter just yet. I know it sounds like I'm saying that we're sort of in this early spring and often New Zealand does get into an early spring in August. We often do get the windy westerlies coming through and that limits 
the cold snaps. We still get them, but they come up and then they get pushed sideways by that westerly. So you can get a snowstorm, but then usually the day after, temperatures are already going back up again, so it's less problematic. But spring storms can bring a lot of snow. So we're not saying that we're done with winter, not at all, but you are seeing the forecast there, it's leaning warmer, the rain's coming back, and a lot of westerlies, at least to begin with, for the month of August. That is all from me. Thank you again for watching our Climate Watch video brought to you in association with our partnership at IBM and ruralweather.co.nz. We'll see you again in one month.